So as you know, the topic of the symposium for this year was the love Rumi has for uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, is there anything that you would particularly like to say about this kind of approach uh, to, to the symposium? Anything you would like to share with us? There are two very different ways of relating to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the Messenger of God and uh, both of them are present in Rumi's works. Um, the one way you can look at that is just to go through uh, the poems, the Masavi in particular, and just um, pull out the places where the Hadith and the Prophet are mentioned. So this, this is kind of what I could call the ordinary way of appreciating love for the Prophet is to uh, realize that in terms of what uh, later tradition calls the heirs, that we're all heirs of each of the prophets, not only of the prophet Muhammad, but most recently and perhaps most directly and most deeply of the prophet Muhammad. So this is a historical kind of start of love. And uh, I think Rumi would say this is a, like uh, uh, having some inkling of love or affection when, when uh, when uh, Majdun hears about Layla, you know, that this is a, it's um, the way that almost anyone can appreciate the Prophet Muhammad, but it's also, um, no matter how deep and knowledgeable one is in the contents of the Hadith and Islam and how all of it is a constant reinterpretation. Uh, it's like a, a Rumi's story about the love for the Prophet is goes so far beyond that because the second way of knowing the prophet is as you call the first way is traditionally called ilm or kind of knowing knowledge in a formal outward way il mazahri but the, the inner love inner knowing is only possible through love and it's not that the love comes from the knowing but the knowing is endlessly renewed by the relationship of love uh, and this um, Later on in Islam, af right after the time when you think of Ibn Arabi and his commentators and Qaisari, so right after Ibn al-Farid, so right after the time of Rumi himself, people started to theorize about that relationship of Walaya and love for Rumi for the Prophet. But, and this is something that's, um, I think the thing that's so obvious there, and it's, by the way, very obvious in the Hadith as they're actually written, and, I mean, the, the ones that affect people the most deeply is the prophet there is truly the messenger of God. Not in a historical sense, but in Rasul, uh, Malaika means the same thing. The word for angels is really the word for messengers. And the Quran says uh, several places, especially in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, the mu'min, the person of faith, um, and with God and his messengers and his books and his, well, his angels and his messengers and his books. But the kind of love that Rumi has for the prophet and expresses and communicates is what in every tradition people see. Uh, it's, it's some saying of Imam Ali where, you know, if, if I, I, I can't, have true faith in a God I can't see. So it's the prophet is, is the reality and the, and the other one who stands between the divine and our life here and through which, um, through which we perceive uh, God. Wherever we're looking, we're touched by and learn the, um, we're, we're learning and loving at the same time. And uh, so that, knowing through loving. When most people think of Shams, of uh, Rumi, they think of Shams at Tabriz. But he only knew Shams a short time and it was transforming or whatever. But Rumi, Rumi's love of the Prophet is the love of the Hadith, the love of the Quran, and the fact that wherever he turns his attention as a creative writer, as a, he's really um, learn, seeing the reality of the Prophet mirrored all in the world around us. So this notion of later on, it's called the Hakika Muhammadiyah, the re ultimate reality of Muhammad. Uh, you'll read about that in the Fusus al Hikam of Ibn Arabi. But I really appreciate the Masnavi because it's not a theory there. It's simply the awareness that wherever we look, wherever we come up with a problem in life, that, um, that 
what we do at the end of Salat, which is to have our praises and blessings for the Prophet Muhammad, also for Ibrahim and the sort of the beginning and the end of uh, Deen Allah, that that's, Rumi simply takes that blessing at the end of Salat, uh, the Taslim, and everything he says flows from that.